Good morning and welcome to ICA's online service. Before we get started, here's a few things you might want to know. Ascension Day is near on May 18th and we are encouraging ICA people everywhere to celebrate a special meal that day we call Epic Meal. Get together with your Go Group, family and friends, choose your time and location, eat together, read Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 11, and then post a pic on social media and tag us, hashtag ICA Epic Meal. On June 20th to 23rd, ICA Kids will be having its Vacation Bible School and we are looking for volunteers to help. If you are interested in learning more about volunteering to help with this event, scan the QR code on the screen. If you are a new visitor to ICA, we would love to connect with you and serve you better. Just follow the QR code to fill out our visitor form and receive a special welcome gift from ICA. We are happy to have you worship with us today. Hello ICA, my name is Hansel and this is my wife Angel. And I'm Elo. This is my wife Janita and we are the head of Go Group Facilitators at ICA West. And we are the head of the Go Group Facilitators in ICA East. Our role is to equip and support both the candidates and also the existing Go Group Facilitators. Now we are inviting to be part of our team. So if you're interested in finding out more about being a Go Group Facilitator, please scan the QR code to join our class on May 28th at both campuses. Let's together build a strong and healthy community for ICA. See you there! It's such a privilege and an honor to be with you this morning. I am Pastor Marianne. I am the children's pastor here at ICA. First, I just want everyone to know about our 24 hours of worship that we're doing on the end of the month. And we would like everybody to come and, and join us for that. Uh, today is a special Sunday. It is Mother's Day. And I would just like to say Happy Mother's Day to all of you. And uh, we just want to honor you today. But also today, we also just want to celebrate every woman, all women. Uh, whether you're single or married, no matter what age you are, if you're a mother, a grandmother, an auntie, and a friend. 
We honor you today, and today is for you. So today, with that, we uh, are not just, just celebrating Mother's Day, but we want to say, you are invited. And that is actually the title of um, my message this morning, is, you are invited. When I say those words, what goes through your mind? Or, how does it make you feel? I know for me, whenever I hear the words, you are invited, it kind of, it just... I, I smile usually <laughs> because it's that whole thing of somebody thought of me. Somebody invited me to something. It's almost like, oh, I have value to them. I'm, in, I'm invited and they thought, oh, yeah, she's a part of our life. So we want to we make sure that she's there at our special event. But maybe, maybe it's been the opposite too, Right? When you hear about something and you realize that they didn't invite you. And sometimes it's disappointing and you're like, oh, I guess I didn't mean that much to them. Or why didn't they invite me, right? So from the very beginning, God invites us. He actually, it's just amazing. And Jesus invites us. So when we say you're invited, and God invites us, invited to do what, right? Jesus comes, and first, he comes and he gives us the invitation to follow him. The invitation to follow. Come and follow me. In Mark chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Jesus called out to them, come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Jesus is inviting us to follow him and be his disciples. I just, I keep thinking what it must have been like for the disciples on that day. You know, they're just living their life, doing their thing. And suddenly Jesus comes and says, come, follow me. And the Bible says they, they dropped everything. They dropped their nets, they dropped it all, and they followed him. I wonder if there was like that excitement in their heart, like, Wow, you know, and I don't think they fully realized this, this calling or this invitation. But I think as they realized that he was the Savior, he was the Messiah, it's like, wow, he invited us. He chose us. And I, it's the same for us today, that Jesus is coming and he is giving us that invitation to follow. Jesus gives another invitation Come to me, all ye who are weary. The invitation to find rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry a heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Jesus is inviting us to abide and rest in him. So it's that whole invitation of coming into his presence of coming and knowing him, of knowing him like a friend, right? Because how can you really have a relationship with somebody unless you spend time with them? And that is what Jesus is doing here. He is inviting us to come to him and to abide in him. So how many of us, you know, really take that invitation? It's like every morning, it's like every day, it's like, come, come. Come to me, right? Come to know me. Spend some time with me. And God wants us to abide in him in that way. And what does he promise? He says, when you do that, come to me, give me all your cares, give me all your burdens. And when you do, you will find rest. You will find peace. What a promise that is in this, in this chaotic world, right? We go about with our busy lives and all these things and God's just like, come, come to me. Let's lay it down and I'll give you rest and peace amongst all the chaos. What a great invitation. The next invitation that Jesus gives is the invitation to serve, called to be his servant. John 12, verse 26. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants must be where I am and the father 
will honor anyone who serves me. So Jesus is inviting us to serve and be his servants. And in that, I think he's calling us to tell others about him and to serve them and to love them as well. And what does he say? He says, if we do it unto the least of these, we do it unto him. Then there's another invitation, but this one is by Paul. Paul invites us to be an example. In 1 Corinthians 11, 1, it says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. This is the invitation for others to follow Christ through our example of us following Jesus. So here we are. We have two invitations from Jesus. The first, the invitation to follow him, to be his disciple, have a personal relationship with him, to abide in him, and to trust him. Then second, the invitation to serve him, to be a disciple who makes disciples, to live your life as an example, and to lead others to Jesus. The question is, Who are you following and who is following you? You know, you might say, well, nobody's following me. That's the thing about people that follow. That's their choice, right? So whether we like it or not, we are following someone or something and someone is following us. But the choice is ours. Sometimes when we say, well, I'm not following anyone, you actually, you're maybe following your own way or you're following down the wrong path, right? Um, And you're leading others there. So we're all following something, but we get to choose what that is. So the question is, have you answered the invitation? What is your answer to the invitation? Is your invitation still sitting there? You know, I think of like, Uh, a lot of invitations, they have what we call an RSVP. You know, you have to write on there and say, yes, I'm coming. Yes, I'm not. Or, you know, have you forgotten about the invitation? You know, sometimes when you get like like a a card or a postcard and it has the invitation on it, uh, you're like, oh, that's really cool. And you set it down and you forget about it. Or maybe you get an invitation like, like on your phone, you know, a message, and then it goes way down and you totally forget about it, right? And and you forget you were invited at all. Um, I think that's sometimes the invitation that happens here. You know, Jesus comes to us and he gives us that invitation and we're like, hmm, you know, oh yeah. Or he's like, come, come abide in me. And we're like, oh yeah, but I'm busy right now. I'll do it later. And we just kind of push it aside and just kind of, it comes out of our routine and we just kind of forget about it. So have you answered that invitation? Have you answered the call to follow Jesus? Do you know Jesus as your savior? That would be the first invitation. Do you know him? Have you accepted him in your life and in your heart to follow him? Do you spend time with him? And do you trust him? Trust is hard, but that's the, that's the invitation to put our lives into his hands and say, Lord, I will follow you. I will trust you. I will abide in you. So do we abide in his presence? Do you abide and rest in his presence? The invitation to abide and trust Psalms 91 verses one through two. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. You know, it always strikes me that whenever God like gives us this invitation and everything, he always says something like, if you do this, This is your reward. This is what I'm going to give you. He's so gracious that way. Like here, you know, whoever dwells, whoever dwells in me in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty. It's interesting to me that whenever God talks about abiding, he talks about rest. 
you know, it even says to be still and know that he is God, right? So the invitation is to be still. And when we're still, the reward is that we know him. What an amazing invitation. And I hope that each one of us takes him up on it, right? And comes to him. How about the invitation to make disciples? Is your life an invitation for others to follow Christ? Now, this is a hard one sometimes because sometimes this takes evaluation. This takes like, wow, how am I really living my life? And am I living my life in a direction that people can really follow? Um, Or am I leading them to a path that isn't good, a path of destruction? Sometimes that can be a hard reality, but I think God is asking us to ask those questions because your life matters and, and it's the invitation to bring others to him. Does your life reflect Christ? Are you an example for others to follow him? So those are all the questions. And now we're going to kind of explore some of this and, and, and people in the Bible, women in the Bible who Uh, either struggled with these invitations or accepted these invitations when they came. The first story we're going to come across is Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 41. It says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Now, I think Martha always gets kind of a bad rap, right? In this bad reputation. And usually people are really hard on her. But I think we can see ourselves in Martha. You know, and it's actually kind of funny because my sister, whose name is Martha, and then my name is Mary, she doesn't like this story. Because, you know, Martha always, we're really hard on Martha. But then later, there's actually a verse in the Bible. And my sister always says, you know, I can actually say that Jesus said he loves me because it it says Jesus loved Martha, (laughs) right? Um, Which I think is, is awesome. Now, it's not a bad thing to serve. And I think each one of us could see ourselves in Martha, right? We you know, we're diligent, we're serving the Lord, we're, you know, in the sense of, but also sometimes we're caught up, we get caught up in busyness. We get caught up in all the tasks and the things that have to be done, that that's what makes us weary. That's what makes us lose our rest, right? And then, then we do kind of what Martha did. We come and we're like, God, why do I feel you're so distant and far away? And I'm so tired and and, and, and he's like, because you haven't come to me. You haven't, the invitation is here. You need to lay it all down. And that's what Jesus is saying. And he's not like getting down on Martha. He's gently correcting her. He's gently saying, you know, it's okay, Martha. I see what you're doing, but she has chosen the better thing. She has chosen to sit here and to abide in me. And that will not be taken from her. And so I think we need to apply that to our own lives and think, oh, am I just too busy? Am I, and is that why I'm weary and heavy? And yes, I need to still my soul and to rest today and take that time. So Jesus holds the same invitation that he held out to Mary and Martha, to us. But we have the choice to either 
abide in him like Mary or to let our busyness and everything take over. So sometimes we can criticize, and, but often we make the same choice that Martha did. So what are you going to choose, busyness or stillness today? So sometimes we even choose to let ministry become more of a priority than our relationship with Jesus. And we have to be really careful with that because I think sometimes we're like, but it's ministry, it's for God. So it's all right if I, you know, if I'm doing this and I'm busy. But the number one thing, the number one thing is to follow Jesus and to be with him. So even ministry, if we allow it, to come between us and our relationship with Christ, it's not a good thing. It's that busyness like Martha, you know, she was serving him, right? But he's like, that's not the most important thing. Come to me, right? So I hope you, you have that invitation and you make that choice to abide in him like Mary did. We must be intentional about listening and being in the presence of God. I think it's so important. And I think the listening is something that often we don't do. Um, we come to God, we're like, we just pour, pour out and pour out, or we have music on. And God's like, no, just turn it all off and just be still and listen. Because only in those moments can we know how God really speaks to us. And sometimes he does it through his silence, through just being in his presence. And we need to do that and take that invitation. So now there's two other women I want to talk about. Um, they're two Gentile women, uh, which means they weren't Jewish. They weren't part of the Israelites. Um, but these two women had a choice when it, it came to them. And they saw the invitation, and they took the invitation. The first one I want to talk about today is Rahab. So Rahab is in the story of uh, Joshua in the Battle of Jericho when the Israelites came and they were to possess the Promised Land, right? And they were supposed to take it. Um, and Rahab lived in Jericho. The wall around Jericho was thick. And we know the story, they walked around the wall and God knocked it down. But Rahab was there and she saw what was happening. So in our story, they sent two spies. And she was the one, she actually hid the spies uh, up in her house and so that they couldn't find, find the spies. So after the, they leave, um, from trying to find them, she goes and she talks to the spies in Joshua chapter 2, uh, verses 9 through 14. And she said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in the country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to Sahon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Now, then please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brother and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death, our lives for your lives. The men assured her, if you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. Then in Joshua 6, verse 25, it says, but Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, with her family and all who belonged to her because she hid the men. Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho, and she lives among the Israelites to this day. See, Rahab saw the invitation, and she took it. And if you, in what I read there, you see that she says, 
Your God is God. He is the God in the heavens and the earth. And he did all these miracles. And she's saying, I believe, I believe. And please save me, save my family. Um, please save us from destruction. Now, her choice is so important. It didn't just affect her. It affected future generations. And, you know, she had a messed up life. She made some bad choices and, and all of it. But we see here, God redeems those who even have messed up lives and make horrible choices. And maybe we think they're lost or maybe we think about ourselves. I've done so much. I can't, I can't come, but the invitation is still open. He's saying, no, come, come to me, come to me. And she took that invitation. Then the next one we talk about is Ruth. Ruth fought for her invitation. She refused to go back. Ruth 1, verses 16 through 17. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And where I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. See, Ruth was a Moabite woman. She wasn't an Israelite. But she married an Israelite because they were in the area of Moab. And, um, but he died. And so she's traveling with her mother-in-law, Naomi, back to the promised land, back to Israel. And she has this choice to make because Naomi says to both her and the, the other daughter-in-law, you know, you shouldn't come with me. You know, you're not even a part of, of this. Just go back to your homeland. And the other daughter-in-law does, but Ruth clings to her and she says, no. She sees this invitation and she says, no, your God will be my God. I will not leave you. I will die in your land. I I will go with you. So Naomi takes her with her. So we see the invitation to be a part of God's story. And we see that with both these women. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 5 through 6, Solomon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. So we see both these women who were Gentile women, who had, you know, a past and everything. God redeems them, and they are part of the genealogy of Jesus. What an amazing thing to know that. And just think all the generations that were affected by these two women's choice to take the invitation. So our choice can change generations to follow. So sometimes, you know, when I speak and I've spoken to youth, I've gotten the question, well, it must have been easy for you because, you know, you were in a Christian home and you were brought up that way, which is true. But then I got to thinking, you know what? The only difference between me and them is a choice. Because, you know, a lot of us have some come from very hard background, very hard home life, and it, it, that path is, is a bit harder. But you know what? It wasn't my choice. It was my parents' choice. Both of them came to Christ when they were a lot older. My dad, when he was in his 20s, right before he went into the military, his brother led him to the Lord. Um, and then my mom, she, you know, was actually an illegal immigrant in Canada and she was Mennonite and really didn't hear about the Lord and she came to know him. And so they were both kind of like first generation Christians and they met at Bible college, which they would have never done if they had not have gotten saved because my dad was in the U.S. and my mom was in Canada and the Bible school was in Canada. 
And so you can just see that our choices matter. You can be the one that affects the next generation. You can be the one that severs that constant, you know, of, of generation after generation going down the wrong path. You can be the one that says no. It says, you know, if you follow me, I will bless from thousands of generations upon thousands of generations. And you can be the one that does that by your choice to take that invitation. Now, the one last person we're going to talk about is a dedicated mother in the Bible, and that is Hannah. She comes to the Lord and she prays. Now, Hannah couldn't have any kids, and that just wrecked her. And she's like, Lord, I, so she just comes to God. But so the Lord touches her and blesses her with a child. But the invitation here is to give back. 1 Samuel 1, 10 through 11. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire life and is a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord. His hair will never be cut. And that is what she did. You know, I think how hard it must have been on that day where she had to bring him. She brought him to the temple and... Um, and to Eli, and said, here's my son, I dedicate him to the work of the Lord. But you know what? Isn't, isn't that what God asks each one of us to do as a mother, is to give our kids back to him? Or those things that he's like, give it back to me. And that's that invitation to do so. But just think, Samuel, wow. What a prophet, what a man. He came to know the voice of God. He affected many generations as well. So that invitation is so important, I think, sometimes, is to take that invitation and give back to God what he has given to us, which is not easy sometimes. Actually, my sister once said she was really struggling. They were, they were coming back to Indonesia, and God just spoke to her and said, you know, ah, uh, you... I haven't called you to protect your children. I've called you to prepare them. Maybe that's for someone out there today that, you know, we try so hard to protect our kids from all these things. But honestly, God is asking us to prepare them because they, they're going to have to walk in that path. Um, so that's also an invitation to prepare them. So now we come to an example of my own life and illustration, and I'm going to talk about my mom <laughs> um, today. Uh, my mom really influenced my life, I think, more than she'll ever know. Uh, from the time I was very little, I always heard her say, Jesus is your friend. Jesus is your best friend. You know, you can come to him, you can talk to him. She really modeled a relationship with Jesus. So when I was five years old, I'll never forget it, I was at a crusade and they, um, I was at a kid's service and they talked about, you know, Jesus and if I wanted to give my heart to him and I just really felt that calling and I even heard my, the voice of my mom, he's your friend, he's your friend. And so I went up and accepted him in my heart and that's, that was it for me, that's, that's pretty much my testimony of how God changed my life, served him my whole life because of that. But that wouldn't have happened without my mom. I know that's for sure. Um, the other thing I remember about my mom is when I was uh, still a, a young girl, is there were so many mornings I would walk in her room and she would be on her knees praying. Um, and I knew she was praying for us, us girls. I knew she was praying for me. And you know what? I still, I can still, even when I talk about it, I see that picture in my head of my mom praying. And in that moment, you know, it was like, oh, this is important. You know, it's nothing she said, like prayer is important, but she modeled it. She showed it. And, you know, especially when things were hard, you know, we would always come together and pray as a family. 
and it really affected me. Also, reading the Bible, that was like very important to my mom all the time. Her Bible was always open. She would always have scripture plaques all over the walls in our house. Um, she would have little notes with scriptures on them and she would write. And actually, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. My mom, if you ask her, because she's always in the word of God, if you say, you just give her a phrase of a verse and you say, you know, where is this found? My mom can usually get you to the book, the chapter, and right around the verse where it is. It's pretty amazing. She's like a reference book. <laughs> um, it's pretty incredible. And so from the time I was little, she modeled that and showed us that the word of God is very important and that we need to spend time with him and spend time in the word. So also worship. I remember uh, I was young, maybe six or so, and, you know, we would go to church, and my mom would worship the Lord. She would raise her hands up, right? And so I watched her, and so I would look at her, and I, I watched her, and I would, then I would raise my arms, right? And at the time, I probably didn't know what it meant, but, but I was worshiping. I was modeling after my mom, right? And actually, there was, <laughs> there was a lady in the church that came to my mom afterwards. I remember, I didn't know what they were talking about, but my mom told me later, um, this lady came to her and she said, you should stop your daughter from doing that. Stop her from raising her hands. She doesn't understand what she's doing. And my mom got almost very, very angry in a good way um, and said, I will absolutely not stop her from doing that. Says that's how she learned how to worship. And that was the end of that. And I just think, you know, uh, the other day, actually, and I say kids, I saw a little one of the little girls raise her hand. And then I saw the next little girl kind of put her arms up and then raise her arms. You know, that's how we learn to worship is we have somebody and we're like, oh, yes, especially at a young age, I think. So then the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, I uh, from a, we went to a crusade when I was young in Colorado and they were praying for kids to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And they came to me and I'm like, yes, I want that. I, I want to, you know, speak in tongues. I want the, the Holy Spirit. My mom was like, oh, she sings in tongues all the time. And I said, oh, that's what that is. And it's because, probably because I just heard it all the time. And I can't remember a time when I was actually filled with the Spirit, but it's just always was, and I think it's just because it was modeled before me, and I heard it, and then God just spoke to me. And then the church. The church, church was very important to my mom, very important to our family, and um, very much so that they always brought us to church. And the one time when we were switching churches, my mom, we didn't know where we were going to go, um, but my mom said, I'm just going to lay a fleece out, and whoever invites us out uh, to lunch, that's where we're supposed to go to church. And that's exactly what happened. And that's actually how we ended up in an Assemblies of God church. So my mom followed Christ, and I followed her example. I pray that someday someone else can say that about my life. Once again, 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Now, there's a song, it's called Talking to Jesus, and in there, it just talks about how, you know, there's a grandma, and the boy sees how she talks, you know, to Jesus, and then there's a mom that does it, and how it affects their lives, and it just, it kind of resonates with me and my, my story, um, and, but the line that says, because now I'm talking to Jesus, she got me talking to Jesus, yeah, my mama was right. Yeah, I love talking to Jesus, and I'll be talking to Jesus for the rest of my life. So there's this invitation this, this morning. Jesus is inviting us to come and follow him. Jesus is inviting us to come into his presence and know him personally. Jesus is inviting us to come and lay our burdens down so we can find his rest. Will you accept the invitation? 
Will you answer the invitation? Will you choose to come and follow him? But there's also our invitation. Are you inviting others to follow after you as you follow Christ? Is your life an example that leads others to Christ? And are you a disciple who is making disciples? So that's the question today. And I don't know where you are at, but I hope you take the invitation. And I hope you, when Jesus says, like even right now, he's saying, come, come to me. If maybe you're really weary today, maybe you need that rest. He says, come, come to me, come follow me come to me today. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. God, I thank you for the invitation, the invitation to come. God, we answer that invitation today. We say yes. Yes, Lord, I will follow. We say like Isaiah, yes, Lord, send me. Here I am, send me. Yes, Lord, I will not just follow you, I will tell others about you. And Lord, help me to live my life as a, as a living example so that others can know you. Help me to take anything out of my life that shouldn't be there and help me to walk in your grace and your mercy so that others can also do so. Lord, I thank you for everyone who's listening, everyone who's here. God, I just pray that you would just pour out your anointing as they accept that invitation and that wherever they are, they would feel your presence and feel your grace like never before. And they would accept that invitation and start a journey with you for the rest of their life, that we would talk with Jesus for the rest of our lives. I encourage you to do that even this week, to abide in him, to rest in him, to follow him. We just thank you so much for joining us today. And we just want to say God bless and please come back again. Thank you for joining us today at ICA Online. We hope you had a great Sunday and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Ascension Day is near on May 18th and we are encouraging ICA people everywhere to celebrate a special meal that day we call Epic Meal. Get together with your Go Group family and friends, choose your time and location, eat together, read Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 11, and then post a pic on social media and tag us, hashtag ICA Epic Meal. ICA 24 hour worship is happening May 31st to June 1st. We will be gathering to worship God for 24 hours in a row at ICA West. Come join us and stay as long as you like and let's seek God upward together. On June 20th to 23rd, ICA Kids will be having its Vacation Bible School and we are looking for volunteers to help. If you are interested in learning more about volunteering to help with this event, scan the QR code on the screen. ICA is looking for volunteers to help us with our service media ministry. This includes service directors, lighting and sound, and LCD operators. We're also looking for help with worship in the West and hospitality in the East. Check the QR code to see other opportunities and sign up to start serving at ICA. Small groups are the best way to get connected and meet people at ICA. If you are not yet part of a small group, visit our website or the Church Center app and check out what group might be right for you to join and sign up and get connected today. Giving to the ministry at ICA is easier than ever. Just scan the QR code of your mobile banking app or enter the account number on screen to make a transfer. Your generosity is what makes the ministry at ICA possible. If you need prayer, we want to pray together with you. Visit bit.ly forward slash ICA prayer online and let's believe God together for a breakthrough in your life. ICA online prayer service happens every Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. Check our social media on Tuesdays for the Zoom link information and gather with us to worship and pray together. ICA has services every Sunday in person and online on our YouTube channel at ICA Surabaya. Service times at our West Campus and online are at 8 a.m. for Bahasa and 10 a.m. for English. At our East Campus, our Bahasa service is at 8 a.m. and our English services are at 9.15 and 11 a.m. Join us each Sunday to worship and grow together. Follow ICA social media on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. 
There you will find important information, devotions, playlists, and interesting content and updates for you.